morning, everyone. I'm Katie, the education director here at Carolina Tiger Rescue. And it is Friday. And of course, on Fridays on live, we feed. We actually have some servals that we've met previously, but we haven't seen them eat. Um, and we pick them because they are, there's something else when they eat. So we'll have to see how they do this morning. Uh, behind the camera, I've got Marissa, our volunteer coordinator. Morning. And then we've got Keeper Kara here as well. Um, and we, we decided to be fancy today and drive down our education vehicle, which we're super excited about. So the animals oh, yeah. are, are getting doubly enriched because we very rarely drive this around the sanctuary. Um, so these, uh, we've got uh, actually five servals in this area. Um, in this one enclosure that goes three shifts, it, um, there's a shift here, one in the middle and one in the back. Hi, Stevie. <laughs> we've got Stevie. I love we her. Have there, and we have Queen. Then in this enclosure, we have Blondie. And then um, opposite of Blondie, we have Dexon. So Blondie, Steve, Cher, and Queen all came from British Columbia with the th three serval boys, um, Mick, Bowie, and Dylan back in November. They were rescued from a backyard breeder where they had been um, held in RVs, in, literally in somebody's backyard no ventilation stevie does not like this story no uh -huh. ventilation no natural light um standing in their own feces uh just just really really um unsanitary and unsafe conditions for them so there were actually 13 servals we worked with um two <laughs> other sanctuaries uh in the united states sister sanctuaries of ours to get everybody rehomed and we took uh the four girls and the three boys that we have um <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get them shifted so this morning we're going to feed these uh, 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 four girls Daxon actually eats in the evening but we'll get a chance to look at him we'll give him a treat piece he eats in the evening though because he gets his meds in that um, and we found that to be better for him to make sure he gets those meds um, and then we're going to head over and actually see one of our tigers T.O. and we've fed T.O. before and we've seen him but we haven't gotten into his story and we would just want to touch base on that so we ready? Yeah. All right. She's so chatty. So we've got Stevie on top of the gin box. She was super chatty this morning. Blondie is over here going, oh, we're going to eat. All right. So Kara is inside our safety cage. We're going to head inside our safety cage. We've got two servals on our right and three on our left. So we're going to make sure that we stay at least three feet away from the enclosure because they can certainly reach out with those paws, which I'm sure we'll see in just a second. So we do shift these ladies when we're feeding, just as we shift all of our cats, um, and that is to make sure that we eliminate any uh, aggressiveness over their food, um, but it's also to make sure that everybody gets the amount of food they're supposed to get. All right, Kara, what are we feeding today? Okay, so... <laughs> Hang on, I'm just in order. We need those to be. So Stevie is on a small, Cher is on a small, and then Queen on an extra small. Um, so with Cher, she's got pretty bad manners. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, have a little piece that I'm gonna put down, and then I have a big piece. Let's stick that down real quick. And there we go. So that she's got four paws down. What do you say? Four to the floor. Four on the floor. Four on the floor. <laughs> um, so that is kind of a uh, different way since these guys were new they're not used to food shoes i'm not sure how they were you know fed beforehand um but that's a way we can kind of get them used to um staying down um it's obviously not safe for them to necessarily climb we don't encourage that um so that's just a quick and easy way we can kind of distract them to stay down and then put their food down really quick as well and hey marissa i don't know if you can um and there she kind of walked away, but uh, she's back behind that uh, platform. And she growl she's growling the entire time she's eating. I think she's actually going to get it. It's hard to see her. One. So while you're feeding Kara real quick, well, I <laughs> just need to point out, she's coming back with the chicken to make sure she gets this other piece of chicken too. <laughs> so... Kara, while we are over by this food chute and we can see the meal sizes, what what does it mean to be a small or an extra small 
What's the difference? So those are placed as markers pretty much for our volunteers as um, designated sizes. So it's like a visual marker. Um, we also technically base them off as um, amounts. So an extra small is technically um, 0.5. Um, a small is 0.75 and kind of pounds. Like, yeah. Pounds. Um, <laughs> Not chickens. And the list kind of goes on and on, but basically it's just kind of a marker, a visual marker for our volunteers to kind of see what technically the size would be. Um, we don't have our volunteers walk up and put the food up against it because you have to stay three feet back. Um, so always safety. So it's just kind of a visual marker of, you know, what am I feeding them? So an extra small technically would be about a chicken thigh. Um, about um so that is what we're gonna feed queen right here um so we're gonna feed her right here perfect and we're so the way i like to explain it at camp for the sizes um is if you told me that i could have a small piece of cake and you told my brother that he could have a small piece of cake and allowed us to cut it ourselves our our pieces would look very different. So when we have a lot of, mine would probably be like this big and his would probably be like this big. But so uh, when we have a lot of volunteers out here, that size can vary from person to person. So we have that visual marker there to say, no, this is the size they need to get. So it's consistent for them. All right, I'm gonna see. Mm -hmm. So Stevie's food chute is on the other side, but Kara's gonna feed her here on a stick. <laughs> she's gonna make sure that Kara doesn't have anything else for her as she tries to figure out where am I the nope. safest to eat this it's right there apparently right there so again if you notice and this will look a little different when we get over to Theo our big cat but she is keeping a close eye on Marissa and us she's got four paws ready to run should she need to um, and she's very alert and very aware of what's going on. So she's not even certain to eat. Whereas if we were with our tigers, they wouldn't care. When you're the big guy on the food chain. You gotta drop one to get the other kid. You have a pretty <laughs> safe idea. Nobody else is gonna come take it, but these guys are obviously a lot smaller. Living in Africa, they have other animals that they're gonna have to contend with um, that will happily take their food. Jackals will come take their food. Caracals will come take their food. Um, so any other predator that's slightly bigger than them <laughs> Queen has brought her other piece over and coming back to check on the piece that she's left behind. Oh, share. Uh, now, this could settle out. Remember, they've only been here since November. They could start to get used to the routine and feel a little bit more comfortable about feeding, but we certainly have cats here who um, Santana's lived here his entire life. I fed him yesterday and he did a similar thing of I've got a resource guard, uh, which is totally fair. Again, they're not the biggest guys on the block um, out in Africa. So those instincts are still there. Um, People are asking what types of sounds they make. So I'm trying without being too intrusive on their meals to get a little closer so you guys can hear the, the growls. They're certainly not going to be purring during uh, this particular live. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. So one thing to remember as we're looking at these servals is servals, unfortunately, are big in the pet trade. Um, so if you want to, it's just going to give Blondie her food. Much different experience. <laughs> Blondie's a little bit of a, a delicate flower, as we like to say. She's, she's got some better manners. This is also a little earlier than we normally feed them. But she's like, okay, I take that. That's perfect. <laughs> but as you see the different, um, uh, or as you saw with the other three girls, Stevie, Cher, and Queen, uh, extremely aggressive. These guys have maintained their natural instincts. Uh, they have never lived in the wild. This is something that you would not and should not have in your house. Um, that instinct cannot be loved away. We like to say you can't love the wild out of them even raised as kittens, they get aggressive. We have uh, numerous servals here who used to be pets. And also the breeding, um, the, the breeding procedure for all of these is extremely stressful for them. All of these guys are declawed on all four paws. So as they age, we will look for signs of arthritis to make sure that they 
um, are, are given any type of medication to help keep inflammation down should they show those signs. These guys were not fed a proper diet previously um, and it took a while to get them over to a whole carcass raw diet um, and they're doing exceptionally well at this time. Those instincts are there. They are aggressive. They often will eat inappropriate things in people's houses because of the amount of energy they have. These are the ones that'll eat between three and 4,000 rodents in a single year, meaning they're always, always, always on the go. And if they're just handed their food and don't have to work for it, especially if it's inappropriate food, uh, they're gonna eat inappropriate things. We had a serval who, before he came to us, Hobie, who had eaten phone cords and socks and flip-flops and had three or four open abdominal surgeries. And it's just not fair to them. So, go ahead, Katie. I would say, speaking of a, well, yeah, he walked away. He, <laughs> he might come back up. Sorry, Shay. Sorry, Blondie. <laughs> Sometimes you get hit with chicken around here. It's okay. Somebody threw a piece of cake at me. I'm going to be all right with it. <laughs> so she gets a lot more. Yeah, she does. <laughs> what is she on? She's on a medium. She's so. on a medium. Oh, maybe. So with the ratio you mentioned before, small being or extra small being half a pound, mm -hmm. small being three quarters, medium would be a pound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, Kara, how do you decide how much each of them gets? Why is it that Queen gets extra small, these guys get small, and, and Blondie gets medium? What is the... We basically just kind of, well, you keep an eye on their, like, their body, um, and their body scale, and just, um, make sure so like they, when they initially came in it was trying to figure out what they wanted to eat um these girls were a little tricky when they first came in um they really liked one thing um the servo boys were the same way um they didn't like chicken when they first got here <laughs> chicken is one of the things we have most of so um, they've learned to really like it which is great um we were not sure what they got before uh, they came here. So normally in that case, um, we normally hammer the bone before that. Um, so it's kind of a gradual, we hammer the bone and then we start with, uh, and then we start giving them the bone to make sure they kind of just have a gradual um, introduction to, to bone when we, when they first get here. Um, but yeah, and then we just kind of keep an eye on their, on their body condition and make sure that, you know, they're not gaining too much weight. Um, and yeah. So sure. I think Blondie, oh, I don't know where she went. But. She walked away. <laughs> she walked away. Yeah, she, uh, and, yeah, I think we should. The good, the good <laughs> She's news, just going to leave that for later. The good news yeah. for her is that there's a roof on that enclosure. There's no other animal, vulture, or anything that can get close to it. So she is welcome to walk away from it. It'll be there when she's ready for it. So, um, on this side we have Jackson. Jackson is um, another of our servals. He was actually privately owned. Um, and we rescued him from an owner. Uh, she was living in a state where it was not legal to have him um, and decided what was best for him was to give him to us um, so that we could uh, care for him properly. She loved him very much. We have no doubt that she did the best she could, um, but came to realize that was not the best and, and most appropriate place for him. Um, one thing I'll point out is when we do take animals from private owners, they're required to sign a document that says they're not going to go get another one or another wild animal and have it as a pet. We are here to be part of the solution versus part of the problem. So if Daxon's owner had said, you know what, Daxon was a little too much. Let me go try this serval from this breeder. Then we're just, uh, we're just making that easier for her by taking him from her. Um, if somebody has a tiger and they go, well, tiger's too big and too aggressive. I'll give him to Carolina Tiger Rescue. And then I'll go get a serval instead. Again, we're part of the problem instead of part of the solution. So it's really, really important to us um, to make sure that we're helping to educate and end the private tr pet trade of these guys. Katie, I've got two questions coming up here. Right. Um, how many servals do we have? Are these all of are these all of our servals? They're not. And oh, sorry, there was sorry. It's a, it's two questions. <laughs> My apologies. Um, how many servals do we have? And are they more likely to get arthritis if they are declawed? Good question. Um, so yes, they they are. Their risk of arthritis increases when they are declawed. 
Um, cats walk on the tips of their toes. And so when you are removing that, the tips of their toes, it's like removing up to the first joint on your fingers. Um, but that's actually part of the foot that they walk on. So they're having to adjust how they walk, which then throws everything off, um, joints and everything. So it is, it does increase the risk. Um, even with a cat of uh, Dachshund size, that's still a lot of weight putting on joints that aren't meant to hold their weight that way. So I'm so glad you asked that because we're going to go see Tio in just a minute. He was a declaw and then there's at it, there's even additional problems that we have to worry about and Tio is a good example of that. So hang on to that question as well. Um, and then how many servals we have? I think we're up to 13. Um, we have 13 servals. So no, this is not all of them. We have 16 tigers and 13 servals. We joke that we may have to change our name to Carolina Serval Rescue at some point. <laughs> Um, because of the amount of servals that we've had. We had um, uh, five previously, four or five previously, then we got these seven. Math is hard. Um, <laughs> it's important, but it's hard. And then we just got mama uh, about a month, uh, six weeks ago. So, um, or no, longer than that now. Yeah. Gosh, probably two months ago. We don't know how long we've been here. <laughs> <laughs> All the days run together. I hear it's now May. Um, not sure what happened to April. Uh, but uh, we, we spin it in quarantine. So, um, so yeah, so we have 13 servals. Uh, these are just five of them. We've got Santana, Zoe. Um, Santana was our one that was born here. And then we have Zoe, who was a privately owned pet. Savannah was a privately owned pet. Mama was a privately owned pet. Elvis was a privately owned pet. Um, and then these guys were uh, the girls and the three boys that we got were used through for breeding for people to own as privately owned pet and then Daxon was privately owned pet. So you can see there's a little bit of a problem there um, and one that we are trying to help uh, remedy by educating and, and taking these guys um, because this is the best place for them. Um, and it's been super fun as we've gotten mama. She has, uh, she was living in an apartment, um, in a state where it's illegal and, uh, to have her outside now, she is loving life outside and adjusted to that very quickly, which just again shows you their instincts are there. These guys are wild cats. They're wild animals should not be in people's homes. Um, it's not okay for them out of respect for them. If nothing else, they deserve to, uh, be the wild animals that they are. There's your PSA for the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys are all done. Um, so we've unshifted or we're unshifting them. We want to unshift them. Although um, it does sometimes take them a bit to feed. We may, uh, or to eat, we may leave them shifted for a little bit, but as soon as we know they're done, we want to get down here and allow them access to their entire enclosure. It's just more comfortable for them. Um, and so these three are done for the day. They, when they see the food truck rolling around later for everybody else, I'm sure that they will act like they had never been fed, but we're going to check them off the list. Um, folks are asking about vitamins. They've seen us give vitamins to some of the big cats during feeding, um, and are wondering if we also give vitamins to the small cats because they did not see that today. We do. We give vitamins um, to all of our big, small, and medium cats. Um, we will give the small cats vitamins tomorrow, or at least this section tomorrow. Um, so we give them out uh, three times a week, and then Friday and Saturday, um, we just switch off a fasting day for medium and bigs between Fridays and Saturdays, just depending on our schedule. Um, but small cats get fed Friday and Saturday. Um, the only fasting day for small cats is Tuesdays. Um, and then again, just depending on our schedule that week, sometimes it just, um, like if we have a, uh, a knockdown, like a veterinary procedure or something like that, that takes up our whole day. Sometimes our fasting day is Wednesday. Um, just normally we have our big staff meeting on, on Tuesdays. So that's the day we normally just, um, keep for a fasting day. So we have time for all of our meetings, um, on that day. Shall we drive? Oh, yep. <laughs> We're going to drive. Y'all going to drive with us? Join us, won't you? Oh, as you can, I have to show off the Ed vehicle. We have a few people who commented about they like the, uh, the vehicle. So we've got a couple of our animals featured on it. Hi, Katie. Join us. <laughs> We're going to go on a little, a little drive. Any questions while we're driving? No. Uh, noticing to you. <laughs> 
Are we gonna be showing Mama today? We are not gonna see Mama um, today. I don't know who we've got. I know who we've got on the schedule at the beginning of next week. We won't see Mama today. Um, Mama is one of those that also gets fed in the evening um, to make sure that she gets her meds at, uh, uh, with her meal. So um, we will not see her. She also lives way over there. Um, and although we have our car, um, we, we're not gonna keep you all morning. Um, I mean, I could talk all day, but I think eventually you guys get bored. So we won't see Mama today. We'll see if we can't add her into the schedule um, in the next week or two so we can see her. She is a fun and feisty one, um, and it's been super fun to see her adjust. Oh, I needed to go up top, didn't I? I mean, we could just loop and do T.O. If you it's want. okay, we're going. We're gonna, so let's do another question while we drive Sorry. around. I'm so used to coming down here. We got to get up top because we got something fun for T.O. today, and I forgot that. Sorry. So normally we'd pull right up to T.O.'s food shoot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but today we need the entrance to Tio's enclosure, and so we're just we're going the uh, the scenic route through the sanctuary today. Thank all of you for joining us on this lovely Friday morning. Um, so one more question while we drive. Yes. Um, people want to know if um, the swag we are wearing, our sweatshirts and stuff, are available uh, for purchase. Uh, yeah. That's where I got mine. Right in the gift shop. Um, so yes, if you check out our gift shop online, um, you are able to purchase. Um, the colors vary depending on the year and the season and all that. Um, but there are certainly uh, sweatshirts available. Um, we have our, which I forgot, I was going to wear today and totally forgot, our Pet Tabby's Not Tiger shirt mm -hmm. is um, in there too in this really gorgeous blue um, that I love. Uh, a lot so um, check that out yeah absolutely good question all right let's turn this around and so since it seems to be an unofficial serval Saturday or serval Friday while we shift Tio here he lives next door to one of our other servals that is Santana he is the one that Katie was talking about earlier that was born here many years ago um, and Tio is who we're going to be feeding next. So if you guys notice, we have this shift door down and Tio's on the left. So Kara's called out Tio on the left, shift door is down. I'm going to do the same. Morning Tio. Tio on the left, shift door is down. So, um, uh, if you remember, we have a double door system. One door cannot be open. Closed. If the other one is, so that is closed. So Kara can now unlock this door. Morning Tio. <laughs> He says good morning. Um, so while Kara sets this up, if you're right, Kara, I'm going to go ahead and talk about him and his toes. And I must be glad enough for you to chime in when I mess something up. Um, so this is Tio. Tio is 18 years old. I was say an old man. 18. Um, he just turned 18 in February. And Tio came from the southwestern part of the United States with Shira, who lives with our white tiger saber. And then Yanaba. Um, Yanaba was the one last Friday we had a fun time trying to find in her enclosure because she likes to hide. Um, but Tio, of, uh, and then they came with another tiger named Kari, um, who unfortunately has since passed away. Tio, though, is declawed on his front paws. Um, uh, oh, he's declawed on all four. Thanks, Marissa. Yep. Um, and we're going to see if he'll come back here, but, uh, what we were noticing with him is he was starting to limp on his front. Of course, I just saw it and he walked away. Right. Right foot. That's what I was going to say. I had to I picture was, it in my head. I had to second guess myself. See if um, we can see it as he walks up. Yeah, we started to notice he was, he was, uh, um, limping off that front right foot and we were able to get a look at the underside of his, uh, paw and notice that, um, uh, there was a, a big sore on, on one of his toes. And so what we um, 